Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Ah, delicious. Today is, <laughs> I wanted to say Monday. It feels like Monday to me, but it's not. It is the day that you say with me. It is Friday. Woohoo! Friday, August 25th, and I am all discombobulated, uh, taking an actual vacation does that to you. It's, um, the good and the bad thing. So anyway, I'm back from vacation. I got back late Wednesday night, so I theoretically had yesterday to recombobulate, but I am not yet fully combobulated, uh, for no good reason. <laughs> except that it was a great vacation. It was lovely. Um, if you follow me on social media, you will have seen that I posted a few things. We were at Mission Beach in San Diego, um, had this amazing beach house right on the boardwalk, looking out on the ocean, big windows from the living room looking out, um, great patio where we could sit and watch the people go by and watch the water, um, really well-equipped place hosts were really good. We did it through VRBO and, uh, yeah, it was, it was terrific. We had a great time. Uh, if you're paying attention to timing, uh, the hurricane Hillary was on, started to be on track to head towards Southern California. Let's see. I think it, it formed the storm formed on the 15th and we left on the 18th. So by the time we were heading that way, people were already talking about hurricane hitting Southern California, which is a big deal there because they just really don't get much intense weather. Um, besides, you know, they get like the fires and the earthquakes, but not, not big storms like that. Uh, so people kept saying things to us like, are you going to ride out the hurricane? And I watched the storm tracking. In fact, I stayed offline almost entirely. Um, and I should add in there that I was there over my birthday on the 22nd. And so I was not online for a lot of the birthday wishes. I did try to um, respond yesterday when I was back. But if you wished me a happy birthday and I failed to respond, um, Thank you. I, I did try to get them all. Even if it was only hitting like I looked at everybody who, who sent me good wishes. And it's so wonderful that there's such a great community out there um, sending me natal blessings. Uh, so, so I did go online to do the hurricane tracker to, to watch the storm because people were worried. My family was worried. My mother was worried. Um, but it, by the time it hit, really by the time it made landfall, by the time it was in Mexico, it had been downgraded to a tropical storm. Uh, we took in the patio furniture. We talked to the host and he's like, ah, eh, just be careful. Maybe we'll take it in. You know, there was always the chance that the storm could intensify or di divert. But, um, you know, it's funny because... People just don't, how do I put this nicely? People don't always get all the facts before they make opinions. I know this is like not startling uh, information to anybody out there at all, but it, it remains a topic of interest to me. Uh -oh. I think I froze temporarily there. Um, it remains a topic of interest to me. I overheard people talking about, well, hmm. my internet is being a little croupy here. Let's see. I hesitate to pause because then I'll possibly lose everything. Okay, it looks stronger now. Uh, so sorry if it was all bobbly in there. 
uh, if I had high production value and edited, you wouldn't have to have known anything at all, but alas. So anyway, um, oh yeah, people forming opinions without all the facts, which I know, yeah, not startling. Still, like I heard people saying things about how, you know, the weather service kept saying that no storm surge was anticipated. In fact, my husband David kept commenting that it was like the same news story over and over again. The forecast never changed. Uh, and, you know, and so some people were saying, oh, well, you know, the they downgraded the forecast. It's like, no, actually, the only thing that got downgraded were people's expectations. Or concerns. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, like people didn't seem to understand I could overhear people talking about this on the boardwalk, right? You know, talking about the hurricane and they're like, yeah, but if a hurricane comes through here, there's going to be, you know, that ocean can just come right up this beach. And I wanted to stop and say, let me draw you a map <laughs> of where San Diego is. Here's the beach, you know, and, and so basically, you know, like the beach is like this and the storm was coming like this, right? So that's not going to drive the waves into shore. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't sound nearly as good to say tropical storm Hillary. So, um, yeah, Saturday evening, we brought the patio furniture in just in case. Uh, the storm looked like it was going to be tracking inland. It did track inland well east of San Diego. I think they got quite a bit more damage inland. But um, <laughs> we have hummingbird wars going on out here. Yeah, so um, I shouldn't let myself get distracted by birds, I know. Uh, yeah, so, you know, Saturday night, very little happened. It started to rain. Uh, and they don't get a lot of rain in San Diego, and it was more rain than they usually get. Uh, they'd had a storm, apparently, at, like, Christmas time that had been quite intense, and that had everybody riled up and concerned. Uh, so all the businesses along Mission Beach closed on Sunday. They just preemptively closed. In fact, Sunday morning, you know, it was really nice. It was just like barely raining. And so David and I walked down to the Starbucks I'd been walking down to every day just to see. And they had closed preemptively. Uh, the, um, but then the local neighborhood coffee shop, Funky Lemon, which we went to several times and really enjoyed, which turned out was locally owned, woman owned, Latina owned. So um, that was great. They they opened. And I think part of that is because they live there. And but also they were they had a sign up saying that their hours might be patchy due to the storm and that they apologized to the community, which I thought was lovely. You know, that's um I I argue with friends about the whole corporate coffee coffee thing because I do love Starbucks. You all who listen regularly know I love my Starbucks. And one reason is because I traveled so long for the day job that I, I wanted, there were things that I became very attached to when I was traveling two weeks out of every month. And one of those was having, you know, like my drink exactly the way I liked it. And with Starbucks, you get that more or less. There are a lot of things I like about Starbucks. I do like the flavor. I like the latte that they make. But, um, you know, that is the thing about the local coffee shop is that they do have that commitment to the community. Now, Starbucks, I imagine that part of the reason they closed is responsibility to their employees. They didn't want to make their employees have to, you know, travel to that location, you know, if there was going to be a store and possibly get stuck. You know, these things are all a balance, right? So anyway, on, um, but on Saturday afternoon, David and I went to the local grocery store and we stocked up on all kinds of food, uh, snacks, booze. We planned to make a big spaghetti dinner on Sunday. So we anticipated everything being closed. And we, um, yeah, just hung out all day Sunday. It was just a really rainy day at the beach. It was It, it started to get windy at the very late afternoon or evening. Uh, when the wind switched directions because they it had been coming from the northwest all along and typically comes from the northwest and when the storm was passing through 
the wind switched and came from the south. And that budged a few things, knocked some fronds off the palm trees. It really was no big deal. And we had a we had a nice day. You know, we hung out and we watched movies and read and watched the ocean and had our big spaghetti dinner. And it was lovely. We had a great time. So, um, yeah, and then, you know, the storm moved out. It was a little bit cloudy on Monday. But then Tuesday, my actual birthday, was a um, beautiful sunny day. And we got lots and lots of beach time. We got beach time regardless. But it, that was like the classically sunny day at the beach. And, yeah, it was wonderful. On my, um, in Jeffy's closet, my Patreon and Discord, we've been uh, talking about aggressively refilling the well. We've been talking a lot about burnout and how to um, combat it, how to retain creativity with the challenges of life. And there are a couple of people dealing with very difficult family issues. And I started talking about, you know, that I think, and I've talked about it on here some, but I think it bears revisiting. I think we all need to revisit it because it, we, I think we regard refilling the well as this passive thing, as this, you know, like, like a well works, right? You know, we sort of have this idea that there's groundwater and it passively seeps into the well and gradually fills it up again. So if you've been taking too much water out of the well, all you have to do is wait, stop taking water out of the well, and the water will seep back in. And I think that while it's a useful analogy to some extent, it becomes a real problem with when applied to creativity and with the fact that we have, that it's almost impossible to stop taking water out of the well. Even if you stop writing, you have all these other things that are drawing on your personal energy that it may not be possible to to cut off, such as taking care of sick family, um, which a couple of people I know are dealing with, or dealing with a stressful situation. So what do you do in that case? And and I think what you have to do is you actually have to start to get all sorcerer's apprentice about it, right? You know, marshal your army of walking mops to carry those buckets to fill up that well. And I mean, I know I'm really mixing my analogies because in the Sorcerer's Apprentice, I believe it was just a cistern that they were carrying water from elsewhere to fill up the cistern, which then overflowed. But you get my point. I think it's really important to to find ways to aggressively fill the well. Now, what are those ways? I don't know. I don't know. Um, to me, going offline, going on vacation, those are semi-passive ways of refilling the well. Uh, active ways for me are reading, watching movies, taking long walks on the beach, um, I think we have to seek out those things, you know, kind of like we talk about seeking out joy, seeking out those things that give us, um, that, that do pour more water into the well. So it, it's an ongoing conundrum. I would love to hear from people uh, what things aggressively refill the well for you. What counts as like going out and filling up the bucket and bringing it back and dumping it in there. Uh, I have one writer friend who is struggling with burnout. Um, I talked to her a couple of weeks ago and she said she, she was having a bad morning. She wasn't feeling good, but she is like, I don't know what is wrong with me. She's been trying to finish two things, um, a novel and a novella. Uh, she was hoping to knock both of them out. She's someone who used to be able to write really fast in the past. And she said, um, she said, I can't even make the simplest decision. I'm not capable of making the simplest decision. And I don't know why. And I said, you are burned out. I said, your will is empty. And she's been going through a lot of stress too. 
Plus, she's really been pushing the writing creativity. And she's been getting slower and slower and slower. And these are signs. These are signs of burnout. And it's really hard to recognize burnout, especially if you are in it. Um, you just, you know, again, a kind of a tired analogy, but the frog in the boiling water, right? It's stress is like that. Stress gradually accumulates and you don't realize how much stress you're under until it's gone again until you are at the beach and you're like, oh, I don't have to go look at my laptop. Um, although I wasn't feeling that bad. I thought that I might feel like writing while I was there, especially on that very rainy day. I thought, oh, maybe I'll spend it writing or do some writing. And I wasn't feeling a burning desire to. And, and this is one of those things is that it's really difficult to do, but you have to learn to calibrate your internal sense of what you need. Um, and, and, and it's, it's hard. It really is, but you have to get really good at listening to yourself. You know, when are you procrastinating and when are you really listening to what you need? Um, one thing about me having a really strong writing habit is that I often feel like the, the habit compels me to write. And I wasn't feeling that I wasn't feeling that itch to write while I was there. And so for me, that's a sign. It's like, okay, I'm not feeling the itch and I'm, and it made me happy. I was really happy to just be able to sit and read my book or, you know, take walks uh, or go swim in the ocean. I love boogie boarding. I got to do that. So all of those things feel, they felt replenishing and they did not feel like, um, they, they all felt like something I needed to do. The thing about burnout, and I told my friend this too, is that, and I, I often reference this, that I was on this really great panel on burnout with um, a group of people who had all gone through it, um, all writers. And every single person on that panel had only discovered that they were burned out, had only come to the realization that they were burned out because somebody else told them. Uh, I firmly believe that it is nearly impossible to recognize that you are burned out while you are there because you're too burned out to know it, if that makes any sense. Whereas the other people in your life can look at you and say, ah. <laughs> they don't look at you and say, ah, because I had a bug on me. Uh, you know, they look at you and, and they say, you are burned out. Um, being unable to make a decision is a really good cue. Um, because decisions take energy. Every single decision you make takes energy. And writing is a series of decisions. Uh, so being unable to make a simple decision, you know, like, do you want coffee or tea? That's a sign that you are out of energy. Uh, depression is a sign of it. Of course, depression is a sign of other things, tiredness too. But learning to recognize that when you simply can't push through. And that's what I've been encouraging my friend to do. I'm like, you need to take time off of writing. You need to talk to your agent. You need to talk to everybody that you owe stuff to. You need to pull out the stops and handle these things and, and stop writing for a while. Because what can happen is people burn themselves out for years or entirely. So on that note, <laughs> not to end on a downer note, let's not do that. Instead, think about aggressively refilling that well. Go out and get buckets of whatever it is that lights you up and pour it into that well. Um, don't treat it as something that will just happen on its own if you um, let up. Because first of all, it's really difficult to just let up on everything, especially life. And then second of all, it's not enough. So on that note, um, I am off to Bubonicon this weekend. If you are in the uh, Albuquerque area, come on by Bubonicon. I'll be reading tonight and on panels and stuff. And my good friend Kelly Robson will be flying in to be, actually, she's already flown in. She's there. She's going to be Toastmaster and she's going to come stay with me. So maybe we'll do a joint podcast on Monday morning. And yeah, I hope... Um, 
I hope you could spend the next couple of days finding ways to aggressively fill that well. Go out and fill those buckets, people. All right. I will talk to you all on Monday. You all take care. Bye-bye.